my name is Will. Um, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to turn something like this into something not dissimilar to that to give a, an effect of a, a speeding car if you will um, through what you might call a little bit of cheating. So um, let's get rid of that one because we don't need that for the time being. Right, uh, before we start, a couple of things. I'm, um, I'm using Photoshop CS6 and I am on a Mac so I tend to give uh, Mac commands using the, uh, the command key um, if I say command, then uh, if you're on a PC, it's usually control. If I think to, I'll, uh, I'll also say uh, to use the control key. Before we start, it's important that you can see what I'm seeing here, as you will. So uh, under the window command here, uh, the window menu, sorry, I need you to have the layers box checked. And I also need you to have uh, click the path. Now, if you click the path, it doesn't show the little tick. But uh, by, by clicking on the paths, um, you will have this little passing over here up here, so we're all we're all good. All right, the first thing I do in any edit is uh, I always preserve <clears throat> my background uh, or my initial picture, if you will, so I can get back to it. I do that by copying this base layer, and on the on the uh, on the Mac that's a Command and J, and on the PC that's a Control J. So I just do a Command J, and you now see this this layer has appeared. Now, when you're putting the speed effect on, um, it's essentially just a blur. What you have to bear in mind is if I, for example, now, if I just, uh, I'll show you what, uh, what we're going to try and avoid here. I'm going to put a blur on this right now to show you. So we go to the filter menu at the top here, come down to blur, or uh, blur, and we come all the way down to something called motion blur, which gives us a, uh, essentially the effect of motion blurring, as you might expect. So what I'm doing here is um, putting this little line here, which you can grab with a left click and move around, and that'll put the blur in different directions. I'm going to put this fairly, in this case, horizontal because my car is horizontal, but if the car wasn't horizontal on the page, if it was at an angle, you want this line here to be in line with, let's say, the, uh, the tangent to the wheels or the direction which you were, you were moving along yourself. And this, this uh, slide here uh, affects the amount of blur, so I'm around about, I think, five or six, I don't know, something like that. So you can play around with that to suit your particular picture. So let's go to about there. If I click OK, you can see the immediate problem we have is that We've actually not only have we blurred the background, we've also blurred the car. Um, that, of course, isn't something that you'd expect to see if you, let's say, you had a long lens and you were tracking uh, a race car on the track or, or a, um, a dragster or something like that. You wouldn't expect to see the car itself blurred, and that'd be a dead giveaway that you've actually uh, done this in Photoshop rather than doing it for real. So we're going to I'm going to show you a way how to uh, a way of avoiding that. Um, so what I need to do is undo what I've just done. Now what I can do on the on the Mac is Command. Alt and Z on the PC. That's Control Alt Z. Uh, if you're not keen on shortcuts, you can just go to Edit and Undo, or, or sorry, Step Backwards or Undo State. It's entirely up to you. That will undo it for you. Right. So in order to avoid that problem we've just seen, we need to remove this car from this background and then blur just the background, if you will. Now there are numerous ways of doing that. <clears throat> Personally, I would use something called the Pen Tool and Create a Path quite accurately around the edge uh, to within one maybe two pixels but uh, that's going to take us quite some time so for the purpose of this um, this particular tutorial I'll use a, uh, a somewhat shorter uh, more more quick and dirty route if you will now I'm going to actually undo this bottom um, this, this little button here these basically these, these little eyes here tell you which layer is visible or not so I guess you unclick that don't worry about what it does for the moment and with this one selected here I'm going to go to a selection tool and I'm going to do right click on it and I'm just going to collect, uh, select the magnetic lasso tool in this case. It may not work for you but in this case we have a white car on a, on a green and beige, grey, grey, beige background so it's probably going to work okay for us. Um, you can see the, the sort of settings I've got here if you want to mimic these it's entirely up to you or just have a play around to suit yourself. So. Let's start, and we don't have to be terribly accurate. Though you know, the, the more accurate, accurate we are, then the um, the less work we have to do when we finish this a little bit. So, basically, get somewhere near the white uh, or the transition between the white of the car and, and and the background. Press the left click and hold, and then just slowly drag it around the edge of the car. As I say, I'm going to do this fairly quickly because uh, obviously you don't, you guys don't want to sit watching this thing for hours and hours and hours while I mess around cutting this thing out to within a pixel accuracy uh, and, in, and in truth for what we're going to do that level of accuracy really isn't needed um, because we're going to do some stylization if you will on this sort of thing uh, 
You'll notice in, in places it's, uh, it's, it's, it's chopped inside where we want to be. If you notice that in, and you see it at the time, you can release, put a little click down and, and then just go again. So if you release, it'll, put, it'll drop an anchor. So here, for example, I don't know if you can hear this clicking, but there I, I can drop an anchor. So every time I release, it uh, drops an anchor. So I said earlier that you were uh, to, to, to press the left key and hold. You don't actually just press the left key and release, and you can just uh, then just carry dragging along. I was uh, thinking of another tool. I very rarely use the magnetic lasso tool, but uh, for the purposes of this exercise, I think it's probably uh, probably the best one. It just gets us going, and you see where we're at. So I'm just putting a few drops in here, moving around. And you'll see this actually quite rough and ready. Now you'll notice that when I get to the point where we started, I don't know if you can see, I can't really point because you won't see my hand, of course, um, but as I go over the first point, the, uh, a little circle appears next to the, um, to, the, to the tool, and that means you've gone over, over the, the, um, the initial start point, and if you click in there, it will complete the, uh, the selection. If you can't find it, just hit the return key, and then you'll have a selection there. Now, if we zoom in, uh, because you can see places here we've missed pieces and um, and we've probably overshot in other places, uh, for example, just here. So we would need to refine this a little tiny bit. Um, I'm going to show you, again, a very easy to understand, quick, rough and ready way of doing this rather than anything clever. So I want to zoom in. The quickest way to zoom in is on the PC is do a command plus sign and on the, uh, sorry, on the Mac a command plus sign, on the PC a control plus. So I'm just going to move in using the control plus and I'm going to slide on over here uh, if you're a Mac user you, uh, you'll know how to do that with two fingers on the keypad if you're a PC user um, I, I guess you just have to select the little bar on the bottom and, uh, and drag, drag your way along now what I can do here you see a piece with a bit um, the selection has gone here we've missed part of the tail light so I want to add that to my selection but on the top here, you see uh, a number of different options in this bit here if you, if you put the, uh, the mouse over them and wait for a moment It'll tell you that's a new selection, so if we selected this, it would start a brand new selection and we'd lose one we've just had. This one here will add to our selection, this one will subtract from the selection, and this one will give us an intersection between two, two, um, two, two selections. In this case, we want to click this, it's already clicked as it goes, uh, to add, so we want to, whatever we select now will be added to our already selected selection, if you will. So I'm going to carry on using the, um, the, the magnetic lasso tool and see how we get on, so I'm going to click down here, and I'm going to track around here a little bit. Um, actually, alre already this is this is pretty poor. Um, it's not really working for us. It's added a bit. It, it's it's not working too well because it's uh, essentially the the difference between the background and the tail light is so blurred that the lasso tool is struggling to find it. So what I'm going to do is right click on here on the selection tool, and I'm going to select the the uh, plug polyg <laughs> polygonal lasso tool. And I'm going to start again. This will just give a straight line, so we can just click and stop. So click, click, click like this. And you can just go around. The smaller the bytes you go in with this tool, the more smooth you'll get the curve, although it's not a great tool for using. But let's just carry on. I'm not going to worry about the, uh, the spoiler for the moment. And around here. And again, when you get close, just hit return. And you'll see that that's... Um, what have I done here? That's added it to selection. No, I've actually inadvertently clicked on the... Um, uh, the subtract from selection. So how I do that, I don't know. Oh, I do know because last time I had this tool selected, I was on subtract. So I'm going to do the command Alt Z to undo that, and I'm going to click on this tool to make sure I've. Um, and they're going to add with this with this uh, this this tool new tool. Sorry for that deliberate error there. <laughs> so we're just going to just repeat the step there. It shouldn't take as many seconds to do. And we can be fairly coarse right here, and then hit return, and now we've added it in. Now what we do need to do here, when I use the magnetic tool, I, I messed up, it wouldn't select properly, so I'm now going to go to, um, to remove or subtract from the selection. I start here, I'm going to go across here, and essentially I'm just going to remove this bit here. So if I hit return now, then that's gone. As we track back up around the vehicle, we'll see that um, we lost the spoiler. So I'm going to add to selection with this uh, the same tool selected, Start around here somewhere, and I'm just going to track around here. Around here. As I say, if you use the uh, the pen tool, you you can create uh, proper um, smooth vector curves. 
Now we've got the uh, the tear, the uh, the rear wash wipe, but for the purpose of this exercise, I, I really am not going to bother with it. To be honest, it's uh, it's just going to take us a lot of time and a lot of faff. You, of course, can uh, can spend far more time and get that perfect. But uh, so for the purpose of what we're doing now, I really am not going to worry. The same with the uh, the the uh, the radio area as well. It's not uh, let's not worry about that too much. And then just tracking around the car to see what else we've missed. Uh, okay, here we go. Here's a bit of the uh, that that you can see the the magnetic tool. Uh, came around here. So with the add to the selections uh, clicked, we're going to come around here and we're just going to add these bits and pieces in. You might want to come around and just add a little bit more accuracy to the selection that was made by the lasso tool. Tracking around, tracking around. Right, <clears throat> we're getting close, but we can see now where we've got a little bit, uh, bits and pieces in that we didn't really want. So if we go to the subtract tool, starting here, we're going to start subtracting uh, around here like this and around the wheel using a tool which is essentially a whole bunch of straight lines around tyres is not the greatest idea in the world but, but the, the purpose of this tutorial is to give you the idea of how to do this rather than actually produce a picture which we're going to go wow that's fantastic isn't it because that's almost certainly not going to happen on this tutorial so that gets us around the wheel, more or less. And we're going to track around again, track around until we find where we're at again. To a place, sorry, where, um, where we need to subtract a bit more. Up here it's probably worth um, doing a little bit of a jiggle. So I'm going to go to Add to Selection because I want to add this little tiny bit of the uh, bottom end of the cylinder. I don't mind being so picky, to be honest, but there we go. And now I'm going to go to Subtract. So we're going to subtract along here. And we're going to do the same around here. We're going to subtract little bits of the uh, of the road that we didn't want. We may need to. We will probably need to put that back in in a moment. That uh, sorry, that little bit we just went by. It's, that's where it's actually taking some of the tire away that we want to retain. This is I think we could start a square wheel society with this particular exercise. It's quite poor, but never mind. So uh, sorry, I've just clicked to add to the selection. Let's go and go around here. So just this little bit here that we lost, because the last thing we want is to have a little tiny bit of that that's not quite uh, quite the way we want it. And we want to. I want to add this in as well. So I'm going to go along here. Just go around the bits you want in. As I say, you'll get the hang of doing this, and you'll you'll want to spend a lot more time doing this than than I'm doing. And subtract. So up to this here. Just get rid of this bit of road. There we go around here. Now you could say that if you want to be really finicky, it would be worthwhile removing all these little bits in and in through the spokes. And you know you might be right, but uh, something we're going to do a little bit later on uh, suggests or would suggest to me that, that that doing that would be a bit of a, a waste of time because we're going to put some blur on these wheels. So let's not uh, let's not worry about that for this exercise. Just want to remove this from our selection. So it's clicking around here. It's gone. I want to add this little bit in, and you'll find the more of these sort of things you do, the more finicky you get. And if you want to use uh, the pen tool, I think I've got a tutorial somewhere on that. Um, what we would do then is, for example, we're at 200% now. Um, if I was going to use a pen tool, I'd probably come right in maybe somewhere like, like this. You can see individual pixels now. And where this is all like a bitmap, jaggedy edge, with the pen tool using a, uh, a vector path, you can get really nice smooth curves, and you can really go to town if that's what you want to do. But um, that's uh, that's for another another time. Right now, what we have now is essentially we've selected a car, and it's the background we want. But before we progress, something we should be aware of is that we have um, background that we can see through the windows. So what we want to do is to deselect, if you will, the uh, the grass or the background we can see through the windows. So we're going to go to subtract from selection. Zoom right in. Again, we don't need we don't need to be terribly accurate, so I'm just going to start here, go along to here, and then let's walk our way down here just fairly crudely. At the end of this, uh, you'll wonder why we bothered doing this letter, letter of accuracy because we start to blur and all manner of things. So that's and then we want to do the same with this one as well. And I think this is probably the last bit we need to worry about seeing through the window. And this. Around here quickly. 
Right. So now, for essentially, for this exercise, we've selected everything we want to. Now, this has been a very useful selection, and we don't want to lose it. So we can save this selection away as what we call a path. And the way we do that is we press the Control key, uh, go over the selection, and press the left click. And then what we do is we we do this. We say Make Work Path. So click on Work Path. Uh, Tolerance of one to one to five for this particular one, but you might want to play around with that according to how uh, how big the uh, how how resolution the picture you've got is. But I click OK, and now you can see a line around it that's not doesn't have what we call the marching ants anymore. But if you remember earlier, we went under Window, we clicked on the Paths button, and that gave us this little Paths tab here. Now if I select the Paths tab, um, I've done some ones I did earlier to so ignore those. Um, you can see what's called Work Path. Now I recommend that you double click on that and give it a name. Let's give it a name, um, uh, My Path. Now the reason I suggest you do that renaming is because if you start a new work path they are all called work path and when you start a new one it'll just overwrite it and all your good work will be lost. So don't fall into that trap. Right, so if you ignore, I'm, I'm just going to delete these ones off actually so, so nobody gets confused about what they're doing in there. So, you've got My Path. So if you just select it, so you see, you see it highlighted, you come off it, it goes away, the little lines go away, highlight again, and they're back. Now then, down the bottom here you'll see a number of little icons. There's a little marching ant icon. If you click on that, you'll see we've now got our selection back. And if I drop back, I'm going to go back to the Layers palette. Now, we've selected the car, and what I actually want is the background, not the car. So to invert that, you can either do Edit, uh, where's select gone? I always use uh, shortcuts, so I'll find it. Select, there we go. You can either do inverse, uh, or you can do shift, or in this case, shift command I or shift control I. Let's just do inverse while we're there. And what that does is it inverts the selection from having the car selected to having everything uh, except the car selected. So now we've got all the background selected that we want. Now then, the easiest way to uh, to proceed now is simply do a command J on the Mac or a control J on the PC and you'll see a new layer has appeared. And if I turn off the visibility of the layer below you'll see that all we have now is a layer that contains just the background including the bits through the uh, through the car windows. So, so now if you remember we applied a blur before and it blurred the car now if we do that it can't blur the car because the car isn't there. So what I'm going to do is go to Filter, uh, Blur, again Motion Blur, and now what I have now is uh, exactly the same thing before. I'm going to click OK, but now I don't have the car. However, what I do have, unfortunately, is I've blurred the space. Uh, and I'll show you how to, how to deal with that in, in a moment, so that's, that's not a major panic. Now, if I, if I click the layer below, uh, the little visibility, if I click on the little eye, now we can see we've now got a car with a blurred background, but we haven't got a very good. You see all sorts of um, places in here where the, where the blur's gone over the wheels, it's gone all, all, all strange and so on. So what we need to do now is to basically apply what we call a layer mask. Now with this layer selected, I'm going to click on this little button here, which applies what we call a layer mask, which enables us to hide part of that layer. So I click on that, and what I want to do is I want to hide everything um, on this part of the layer that uh, where the car should be. And the way I'm going to do that is going to go back to my Paths menu. I'm going to select my path. I'm going to come down here to the little marching ants and click on it. So that's now selected. Back to Layers. And with this selected, uh, and OK, I'll show you how to get this. Actually, I'll press a D on the keyboard. You can't see it because, essentially, mine's already there. If I press D on the keyboard, it will give me uh, a white foreground and a black background and with the black uh, background selected I'm going to do a control delete or a command delete and I'm going to fill that space and I don't know if you can see if I just uh, I won't, don't worry about how I get this but essentially I fill this mask with a little um, with the mask that we created to cut the car out so essentially what we're doing is we have our blurred background and what we've done we've, we've allowed our car to see through it but we've masked off the where the blur of this goes across our car. Don't don't worry about the details too much. But that's that is essentially how you do it. Right. What do we want to do next? Well, at the moment we have a little bit of a blur, and don't worry about the fact that these bits around here you can see they don't really work. We can sort that out in a moment. 
But what we want to do is to address these wheels, because right now we have some wheels that are static, and that's not much use to us. So we select the layer below, and then we go onto the, what we call the, uh, the marquee tool, and then we do a right click, and we select the elliptical marquee tool. I'm going to zoom in to show you what to do here. Let's set the wheel. Now then, we want to make a circle, but anybody who's ever used this tool will know it doesn't ever go where you want it to go. And so the secret here is, um, essentially, if you press the left click and, and drag the mouse or, the, or using the trackpad or whatever, you can get whatever thing you like, uh, any, any shape, any shape, circle or ellipse you want. So, But of course, as you see there, it's not quite in the right place. If, whilst holding the left click, you press the space bar and then move your mouse, you can move that, uh, the relocate that selection. And then if you release this, the uh, space bar and carry a moving mouse, you can adjust the size. You get the hang of that pretty quickly. So what I'm trying to do here is actually encompass the, the whole of that wheel. Once I've done that in my selection, I'm going to release it. And I'm going to go to Filter, Blur. And I'm going to go to Radial Blur this time, because I want a circular blur to represent the, the spinning of the wheel. I've selected about 35 here. Um, I think that did it for this one. Um, this case, my selection method, my blur method is spin, and I just use a good quality. That, that that's fine. It doesn't really make a whole heap of difference in your blurring something to be on. To be honest, so click OK, and now you'll see that spins up. Do a Control or a Command D on the keyboard to deselect. Zoom back, and also now you'll see we're starting to get a bit of a bit of a spinny wheel going on there. Uh, when I parked this car, I should probably have actually put the wheel straight, but I wasn't considering doing this at the time, so never mind. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing again here. So with this uh, uh, circular elliptical marquee tool selected, left click, pull out to more or less the right place, press the space bar whilst holding the left click, and reposition until you get the uh, the wheel uh, the wheel sort of encompassed in, in that selection. I'm trying to get as good as I can. Try to avoid getting any of the other colours in because that will blur into your uh, in, into your selection and that will be a bit of a giveaway. So I think that's probably going to be close enough. I will say it's a little slightly more complicated if, you, if your wheels are at uh, an angle to your, uh, to your point, point of view. You've got to go for ovals and you've got to mess around a little bit, but it can be done. Uh, it just takes a little bit, little bit more messing around. So go to Filter, Blur, Radial Blur. It's already said as it was before. Use the same um, idea that will make it good. And then a Control or Command D to deselect. And then come back and you can see we're getting there. Now then, before we go to the next step, you may already have noticed that under here we've got the wheel cut out and it looks remarkably like we've chewed it out with, a, uh, with, our, with our teeth. So what I want you to do is, is go to the next layer up and select the layer, what we call the layer mask, this one over here, and then come over and select a brush. And it, what's quite important is, is to select a very soft brush. So from up here on the menu, click down here, and I have my hardness set to zero. That means the edges of the brush is very fuzzy, sort of like that if you will. Now then, this this uh, this is the new brush you can see here. To change the size of the brush without having to go up, down, and, and messing around, basically you can use the open and close square brackets on your keyboard. So the open square bracket does that, close square bracket does that. So just you can just play around. And with a with a brush about that sort of size, and the in this case the white uh, as a foreground. If you want to change by foreground and background, just press X on the keyboard, and that goes. So now it's black foreground, white background. Press the X again, white foreground, black background. I'm going to zoom in. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to blur these edges off a little bit. Like this. Yeah. But I've got, to, I've got to sort of put them back as well in a moment. You'll, you'll see what we can do. Uh, essentially, if we, if we were using the, um, the pen tool and creating a proper path, this wouldn't be a problem. But if you, leave, if you leave these horribly jagged edges in, then you will, of course, end up with something that looks like you just cut it out and whacked it on top of something and it looks pretty pretty rubbish on the whole. So I'm just going to blur these off a bit and then I'm going to just put a little bit of a more circular select on those. And you'll, I'll show you how in a moment. It's, it's pretty straightforward to be honest. Let's just, just do this in a hurry. Let's not mess around too much. Again, going for perfection. Okay, so now we've blurred those off so they don't look so chewed out. But I'm not going to tell you without. We're not going to demonstrate this, but in the next move, this is going. To, these are going to start looking really, really thin on the bottom. So I've got to try now and get get that selection back, if you will, uh, but more circular. So I'm going to come down here again with my um, 
select the mask selected, and this ties with the, with a with the black background. Go to my uh, elliptical marquee tool, and exactly the same as before. Left click and pull around using the space bar to move it around. I'm going to. Oops, uh, sorry, I'm going that way. It makes it a bit easier for me. It's a bit more intuitive that way up. I'm going to make just inside the tool, and this basically this is a, you don't need to worry about the, about, the, about the top end of the of the tire. It's basically I'm just going to try now and, and get some of that black back at the bottom of the wheel um, that I've just blended out, but without having the jaggedness in. So with that selected now, uh, and with the black background, I'm going to do a command delete or a control delete on the PC, and that will put black back on this mask and reveal the bottom of the wheel again. So if I just do that now. I don't know if you saw that, but that just went to black there. Command D on the keyboard, and now I've got a bit of a smooth. It's not great, but it's a little bit smoother than it was. Very quickly, I'm just going to repeat the process on this one. So I just go down to the edge of the wheel, and in fact, I'll probably come over here a bit. Mm, not, not perfect. Uh, so let's say uh, about there, and then Command Delete, and it just puts me. It just it's not by any means perfect. In fact, it's quite the opposite of perfect, isn't it? But it's um, it just it just makes it a little tiny bit bit smoother. Okay, I don't want to dwell on that, but you can see if you take your time and make that a bit smoother, then then the results you get at the end will be great. Now then, this is a bit where we we fixed some of these irregularities around here that didn't quite work. Now because if I just uncheck this to show you this this layer here, because this is um, not completely transparent here, it's a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit, uh, let's say, partially transparent, a little bit opaque. What happens is, if I copy this layer with a Command J or on the Mac or a Control J on the PC, you'll see these areas start to fill in. So if I do once, you see it go, and then twice, a bit more, and maybe a couple more times, and now you can see that's really started to uh, to put the nice lines around the edge, and that's starting to work for us. However. <laughs> In our particular case, because we did a poor job, this now looks like we cut it out and stuck it on cardboard, and it looks pretty miserable. So we've got to do a little bit of jiggery poking out to try and um, take some artistic license, if you will, and uh, try and try and make this look a little bit more realistic. Now then, what I'm going to do is going to combine all these layers here into one layer. But I do it in a, in a way that I don't lose my layers. And the way I do that on the uh, on, on the Mac, I do a Command Alt Shift. E on the PC, I guess that's Control Alt Shift E. So if you do a Control Alt Shift E, you'll see there that that has actually created a brand new layer just here, and I can demonstrate that by unchecking all these layers, and that's and that layer is still there. What I'm going to do that for the purposes of this exercise, I'm actually going to dump these layers just to make it's a little bit easier, a little bit less memory hungry, if you will. So now I've got that layer. Now then, to try and get a little bit of an artistic uh, bent on this and try and lose some of the problems that we've got going on down here, I'm going to do uh, a copy layer. So I'm going to do a Command J on my machine, the Mac, or it's a Control J if you're on the PC. And I'm going to go to the Filter menu up here, and I'm going to go to Blur. And this time I'm going to select Gaussian Blur. And I've got about a hundred selected. Any, any anything that gives you something that looks looks like that, pretty, you know, it looks like it's far gone. Click OK, and then in here, which is called the blend mode, just click the drop down and go for overlay. And now we're starting to get something that's looking a little bit more realistic. Okay, it doesn't look great, but it's but it's getting there. You know, it's getting there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to combine the layers again. In fact, I'm not going. To, uh, am I going to combine them again? Let me think. Did I? Just, I'm trying to think of where the yeah, will actually because I want to. I was trying to preserve some memory, but hey. Um, so I'm going to do uh, Command Alt Shift E, and that's creating me uh, a new layer. I can I'm going to get rid of that one there under there because I'm just trying to preserve some memory on my machine. I've only got eight gigs on this this box, and uh, I'm recording in the background, so I can see it's. I don't know if you said here, but I'm down to 180 megs. So I may have to uh, chop this video in half in a minute. Um, so with this top layer selected, if I if I turn these off, you can see this is now the, the solid layer. So I'm going to go to Image Adjustments, Hue and Saturation, and I'm going to just push that down to black and white because I want to put a, a sepia type effect on it. And now I'm going to go to Image Adjustments Color Balance. And with midtone selected, I generally bring the yellows down to about 20, something like that, and push the reds up to, I guess, uh, let's just play around till you get what you want, maybe go a bit more on the yellows. Something like that. Okay, 
there we go, something like that, and that gives us a, um, a sort of a CPRE kind of effect if, that, if, that's what, uh, if that's what you're looking for. I'm actually going to um, pull this video to an end because I'm running out of memory and I'll start a new one as a part two, so I shall be back in a moment. <laughs> 